a prominent American said about immigrants, few of their children in the country learn English. The signs in our streets have inscriptions in both languages. Unless the stream of their importation could be turned, they will soon so outnumber us that all the advantages we have will not be able to preserve our language and even our government will become precarious. This was not spoken by a living politician, nor was it part of a debate about immigration. This was spoken in the 1750s by Benjamin Franklin. He was reacting to the German immigrants in Pennsylvania, whom he viewed as, quote, the most stupid of their nation. Well, he was actually talking about some of my ancestors. <laughs> but his sentiment is part of our current debate about immigration which is also a debate about language, numbers, power, advantages. The underlying fear might be that we will lose our advantages, and the strangers and foreigners will gain at our expense. And some of these people might be dangerous, too. We're right to be suspicious of strangers and foreigners. Well, I don't know of a political solution to our immigration debate and this isn't the right platform to give it, even if I knew. But a few passages from the Bible give some insight for Christians. First, St. Paul said to the Christians in Galatia, For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit. And the author of the letter to the Hebrews also gives some insight for Christians. He said that our spiritual ancestors confessed that they were strangers and foreigners, and they were seeking a homeland and a better country. He was not talking about immigration in the traditional sense. He said that our spiritual ancestors were strangers and foreigners on earth, and that the better country they sought was a heavenly one. And we are told God has prepared a city for them. In his letter to the Christians at Ephesus, St. Paul said, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. To the Christians at Philippi, he said, we have our citizenship in heaven. We Christians have dual citizenship. The citizenship granted by the State Department and the citizenship granted in the waters of baptism. As citizens of the kingdom of God, our language is not English or German or Spanish. Rather, our language is love. Love your neighbors and love your enemies, our Lord said. And on the day of Pentecost, surely human language divisions were shown to be irrelevant to God. As citizens of the kingdom of God, our communication is not just public deliberation. Rather, we love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. As citizens in the kingdom of God, our doctrine is not legislation, but gospel. The good news that citizenship in heaven is available to everyone on earth. Our spiritual ancestors are the founding immigrants of the country that we seek, a better country, a heavenly country perhaps living into the ideals that we all share, we can even make a more welcoming nation here on earth. Amen. Amen.